My Govanen Melanin. My definition of precognition is the ability to remember the future, especially that future which you will have personal experience with. It has a similar character to memories of the past. Um, however, when you have a memory of the past, you also have conscious dialogue that overlays that to help explain it. Uh, a memory, so to speak, of the future does not have a conscious dialogue explaining it. Uh, another um, phenomenon that confu people confuse with precognition is clairvoyance. And that is a different kind of ability, and I'm not going to determine whether that's, I think that's valid or not. I think it's very rare if it does exist. Um, however, it's not dependent on time and memory. It is simply a psychic method for reaching out to the superconscious or whatever. Um, if it exists at all, like I said, it's rare and it's hard to learn. Precognition, you probably all had dreams that came true or something like that. And uh, we're going to explore a way to uh, become more conscious of that and, and possibly be able to use this in a practical sense. Now before I begin boring you with theories and stories, let's go straight to the practicum. I'm going to be, give you a drill or a, a practice where you can start to uh, connect with your precognitive dreams right away. I'm going to recommend get a notebook, a pen, and a flashlight. Leave these by your bedside. What you're gonna do when you wake up, as soon as you do, with a dream in your mind, write down the date and describe the dream as best as you can. Use your own shorthand if you like. Keep this private if you like. You don't need to show it to people. Um, however, later on, when you do have some sort of dream coming true sort of event, um, you can refer back to this and say, hey, this is how I saw this. And this is the uh, language, the, uh, the lens through which I'm seeing the future. So keep these by your bedside and do some experimenting. That's all there is to that. I should mention that there's different kinds of dreams. Uh, just as many dreams as there are people who theorize about dreams. A good one that you might encounter if you're in or under any sort of personal stress or psychological conflict, um, especially if there's a not, those are not resolved before you drop off to sleep, is your subconscious mind will attempt to help you work out these, these stresses and these conflicts in your mind. Uh, sometimes they take the form of nightmares and sometimes they're very symbolic. Um, but they cannot be con considered to be precognitive. Um, they'll have a different flavor. And by writing, writing down these dreams, you'll detect different flavors of dreams. Another kind of dream that you might have is a astral projection dream, where you dream your dream that you're flying over your neighborhood uh, naked. You know, um, many people have those. Uh, it's not precognitive unless you, um, I don't know, if you have a jetpack someday in the future. In which case, uh, you know, trousers, you know. <laughs> anyway, those are different kinds of dreams. And there's others too. Um, and I think you'll become more aware of more of those. Um, so a couple of reasons for writing this dream journal down. One is, of course, you're going to go ahead and have some sort of experience. I've been here before or whatever. I've seen this before. This seems familiar, and you can go back and look at the journal. But also, on a more esoteric uh, level, 
uh, you're going to enable your subconscious mind and your conscious mind to create some sort of dialogue. Um, it's something that we're not defining, we're, we're allowing it to take place. It may take forms, different forms with different people uh, if at different times. So just be uh, aware and ready for it to happen. Now I'm going to start with a couple of uh, personal stories. Uh, one goes back to high school. Um, I believe I was watching the movie Slaughterhouse Five based on the novel by Kurt Vonnegut Jr., which I later read, or it was the other way around. I'm not. Doesn't really matter. Um, in this story of his, his character Billy Pilgrim becomes unstuck in time, and just seeing that concept portrayed there, um, I'm not exactly sure which particular phenomena I was experiencing, but it helped me to start to ex understand uh, what I was ex uh, experiencing at the time. So I had enrolled in a uh, philosophy class in high school, and the final class project was a little bit open-ended. At that point, I decided to create an experiment vis-a-vis uh, -vis predicting the future. So I enlisted the help of a math teacher, and I went to three of his different math classes to create different uh, experimental groups. The first group, I went in front of the class with the, uh, with the screen pulled down in front of the blackboard. I told them I had written a number on the blackboard behind the screen that they could not see, and they were to write down their guess on a scrap of paper and hand it in. And that, that was a control group. There was no number. Okay, the next group, I did write a number on the blackboard with the screen pulled down, asked them to determine what it was, write it down on a scrap of paper, and hand it in. And I recorded the result. The third group was different. I did write a number on the screen, on the blackboard I should say, pulled down the screen in front, asked them to write down the their guesses, hand it in, and then I revealed it to them. And I said, here's the number three. And that was it. Went back and, and compared the results. And the results for the third group were overwhelmingly... Now, I wasn't studying statistics at the time, and I'm, I still don't have a good grasp of it, but uh, it was significantly uh, a larger percentage of the group, more than by random choices had guessed that number. It really blew my mind. Another story that I want to share involves the Green Blimp. I was living in Cupertino, California, and one morning I woke up with this vision of a green blimp flying over the house so close I could felt like I'd almost touch it. In reality, it was probably a hundred or so feet up. But it was right up there, a big green blimp. Not the Goodyear blimp, which is not green, just some green blimp. And I woke up, talked to my father, who was a skeptic. And uh, I told him about this, and he said, oh, blah, blah, blah. You know, uh, that, that stuff doesn't happen at all. Three or four months later, I'm at the house, doing whatever. Hear this motor sound above my head. I rush out of the house. And look up there, and what do I see? The Fuji blimp. It is unusually low over the house. And it's actually going towards Moffett Field, which is in the north. At the north. There's a strong wind coming from the north. And uh, apparently, um, when airships encounter a headwind, They've got to get down near the, near the ground where the wind is a lower velocity. And this guy was dropping down a few hundred feet off the ground. He wasn't going to, going to clip any power lines, but he was significantly low. Or she, I don't know who was flying it. And trying to work his way back to the airfield at Moffett Field, which was uh, 10 miles away or something like that. And I showed that blimp in the sky to my father. And he goes, son of a bitch. Ain't the damnedest thing, you know? 
Um, that was a very, very vivid uh, precognitive dream that I had. And uh, it sealed the deal for me. I do believe in these things. Um, I'm sure uh, others of you have had similar uh, experiences and I'd love to see uh, what you'd like to share in the comments below. Now the history of precognition is kind of interesting. If we look back to famous uh, prophets and psychics like Nostradamus, um, famous story is that he predicted the death of Henry II of France in a jousting accident. Now this accident happened uh, during Nostradamus's future um, conscious lifetime. Uh, however, the, pre the prediction was before that, of course. Um, so that could be seen as a precognitive uh, prediction, whether it was through a dream or whether in a he was in a trance or something like that. But he was remembering his own um, future, which was in the same time as the death of Henry II of France. And since Nostradamus was in France, he would have been aware of that when it happened. Um, other psychic predictions of Nostradamus happened primarily beyond his death, whether he predicted Napoleon or World War II or whatever. That's not in the uh, scope of this. Uh, <laughs> we're, not, we're not concerned about this right now. Um, other famous psychics like Edgar Cayce, um, he seems to be primarily a clairvoyant. Uh, I don't know of any specific precognitive uh, predictions that he has made, uh, so be not of a concern. If you do any Googling, you'll discover information about the U.S. government's um, remote sensing program. In a word, this is um, a program to train psychics to spy on such opponents such as the USSR. And, and it was run by spy agencies. Um, the problem I have with this is at least one example of a training uh, scenario. The, the trainers would take a uh, psychic and say, here, visualize this these ge geographical coordinates, latitude, longitude, go into a trance and tell us what you see there. And the psychic would go into this, his little trance and, and check things out, come out of this trance and say, I've got, I got X, Y, and B here. It looks like, I don't know, a Russian submarine base in Kamchatka or something like that. And the testers turn around and say, great, now this is what you were looking at. We've already seen it, we've already got pictures of it, and we're just verifying it, right? See, the problem is, if you are developing a, pro develop a program for psychics to go in and discover information about some place that you will never actually visit, in fact, maybe later on you'll bomb it and it won't be anything that'll be in anybody's future memory. Um, I think essentially that's not useful for the mentioned purpose. Uh, you can't use precognition for that sort of spying. However, it's easier to get somebody to get results through precognitive phenomena than it is to train somebody in clairvoyance, where they would just say, I know the Soviet Union has this here and that here and it simply exists. The other explanation that's probably more likely is that these spy agencies were creating a psychological warfare program to make the Soviets think we had a psychic spy program that actually they could not hide from. And uh, with that in mind, I want you to take any information about um, remote sensing, the remote sensing program that the uh, U.S. government implemented with a grain of salt because those are spies and they tell lies. Okay, so um, leave that aside. However, there are other experiments, valid experiments, using science to discover more information about precognition. Um, I want to say that modern um, 
physics is starting to come into its own. They would say that time only goes in one direction and that there's only a cause and effect relationship and that's that's it. Quantum physics currently is discovering through experiments with the double slit um, experiment uh, further discoveries are showing that it may be that time travels in both directions and other uh, facts about um, and other 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 theories about reality need to be reconstructed too whether we can really remember um, phenomena in both directions so the scientific method is useless for us here um, uh, that's one thing that some sci um, some skeptics sort of miss out on uh, they they assume that everything in reality must be proven objectively and as we can see there's plenty of object <laughs> plenty of subjective phenomenon in reality they're just not um, described by science. Thank you for watching. Uh, as always, uh, if you like this, um, help me blow this channel up and click the thumbs up button. Uh, it'll help me, it'll help YouTube, and of course if you haven't uh, already subscribed, please do so. Uh, if you know anybody who might be interested in this subject or anything else in my series, uh, please feel free to share it with them and we'll see what they think about it. And if you have any questions or comments or rude comments, put them down below and we'll check them out. And um, I'd be interested to see what your personal experiences are as well. And thank you again.